Oh, good morning. So today I'm going to take you through the process of rendering and purifying lard, which is pork fat. Afterwards, we'll be putting it up in jar sealers, which is actually shelf stable indefinitely. I know people that have kept it at least 25 years sitting on a shelf in a, in a cool room in their root cellar. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take some of our pork fat. All this together is about half of uh, what we wound up with after butchering our pig in the spring. This is uh, what we wound up with. Now this actually comes from a, one of the roasts that we did recently. So we can take all of the stuff that we've been saving. And had this other, the big packages were frozen. So all we're doing is we're just throwing this into this pot. And then we're going to add some water. So the way this process works is by adding the water, you get the heat everywhere it needs to be. As the fat renders, it floats on top of the water. So once the initial render is done, then we let it cool and the fat will harden on top and create a disc that we can then take, scrape off the impurities off the bottom. And then we repeat the process two or three times until we reach the purification we want. Now this actually creates a uh, lard pure enough to use for making soaps or, you know, face creams or whatever. But it's also great for cooking. And you can see, we just got a whole bunch of stuff all kind of glommed together. We're just going to break it up a little bit. As we put it in the pot here. So that was a nice fat pig that we had. So definitely had lots of, of pork. And I've got two or three more big packages sitting in the freezer. Now, you obviously don't have to do so much of this at one time. So this is one really big chunk, so I'm going to actually cut this up a little bit. Now, you don't have to do this huge amount that I'm doing. You can do, you know, whatever size pot you have. Just, you know, do the appropriate amount for the equipment you've got. I do a lot of sous vide now, so I use this big pot for the larger stuff. And then I've got a, actually an old cooler that I use for smaller stuff. So we're just gonna cut this into some smaller chunks. Now you definitely wanna do this while it's cold from the refrigerator. Trying to cut fat when it's warm can be a challenge. Okay, so we're just gonna put water in here. So I'm running, I ran the water out of the tap as hot as I could get it. And we're just going to put in enough water until it actually buries the fat in here. So we'll definitely have to get some more. Now the fat is going to float a bit, but that's fine. That's okay. If you push it down and, and there's lots of water over top of it, then you're good. At this point, we don't really have to do anything to hold it down. It should still all melt. All we're going to do now is we're going to turn our burner on on medium heat. And we'll just slide it over the burner. Okay, so basically we're just going to let that do its thing. This is going to take probably three or four hours but we're just going to keep rendering this out. We'll see you back here in a bit. Okay, so we're a few hours in, and it, you can see it's starting to render a bit. What you want to do is make sure that it's not boiling too fast. So I actually just turned this down. It was boiling pretty vigorously. You just want a very slow kind of a bubbling. I've turned it down from medium to about three and a half, four. And then you want to uh, go in every once in a while and just kind of bring some up a bit from the bottom. Just try and turn things over a bit so they're getting evenly rendered. 
And you notice there's a few little stray bits of meat and debris and stuff that are going to float in there. But we'll be getting rid of that later during the purification process. We'll check in with this a little later. We've let our, uh, our lard boil away, render for about 18 hours or so. And it's pretty much ready to start to do something with. So let's get started. Now you can see here, we've got just little tiny pieces and debris left. Now there is still a little tiny bit of fat in here, but there's not really any more is going to render. When I checked this about four hours ago, it was all basically the same size. But you'll notice that it's kind of sinking below the surface. So once you reach that point where it's sinking below the surface like this, then you're pretty much done. But we're not going to throw this, this stuff away. Uh, we're actually going to save this and turn it into crackling. So you're going to want one of these. It'll make life a lot easier for you, but you could use a, a strainer for this part. So we're just going to get as much of this stuff out as we can. Shake it off a little bit. So I'm just going to throw it on a plate with some paper towel here. Looks like we're going to have lots of nice crackling out of this. I don't know if you've never tried it, but basically you just fry it up in a pan until it gets nice and crispy. Actually, a lot more bulk left here than I had thought. But it just wasn't rendering anymore. But what we might try is after this batch is done, I may try putting this in some fresh water and see if I can render some more out of it before we start turning it into crackling. The nice thing about this method of rendering, as opposed to doing it in an oven, is this is a much gentler method of rendering and you get a much purer end product. Or so I've been told. I've never actually done it this way myself. When I grew up on the farm, we always did it in the oven. And, you know, you're always having trouble with some of it getting burned. So we want to really go through this and try and get all the particles out that we can. And that'll save us doing more filtering later. The more we can get out now. I think that's about all we're going to get out of this. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to let this cool down. Obviously, we don't want to put this in the fridge. I'm not even sure if this would fit in the fridge. So we're just going to let this cool. I'll bring you back when we're ready for the next step. So everything sat for a while. So I actually took that uh, those was leftover scraps and I put them in a, uh, a plastic colander here, let it drip in. And there was actually quite a bit left in there. So I've never actually used this particular method before. So I kind of made a mistake when I was putting those, the fragments on the paper towel, I was thinking that was more just moisture and stuff that was clinging to them. But I actually wound up losing a fair amount of, of the uh, towel that way. So definitely don't do that. <laughs> What I'm going to do here is this isn't ha this isn't rendered as much as I had thought it was, so it just wasn't rendering in the pot any further. So I'm actually going to take these leftovers and I'm going to use a smaller pot and start those and get some more rendering out of that. And then we've got the the bigger pot here, and you can see it. It looks like it's going to start to solidify fairly soon and as I'm checking the temperature it's cooled down enough I can get away with putting this in the fridge that's what I'm going to do this is going to go in the fridge and this is going to go into another pot and I'm going to continue rendering that out and then we'll combine the um, the tallow from those together when we do the, the next round of uh, re-render and purification We'll bring you back in a bit. Okay, so we've got our smaller pot prepared here with the uh, the water and those leftover bits. And we've got that on the burner. And we're going to let that go for probably another probably 12 to 18 hours, something like that. I'll bring you back in a bit when we're ready for the next stage. Okay, so here we've got our smaller pot of that leftover fat. Now we did manage to get a lot more fat out of it, but we still got some pretty large chunks, but this has been cooking for like another, I think 36 hours or so. I don't think we're gonna get much more out of it. 
We will remove this. This time I'm not going to be putting it on paper towel. Because we're going to uh, put it back into a colander and let it drip. So we're just going to pull this out of here. And this eventually is going to become crackling. So I think that's about the best we're going to get. You can see there's still lots of stuff in there. But that's okay. That's going to sink down a little bit and just kind of float it on top of the water. And the oil, of course, is all going to rise to the top. And then once it cools down a while, then we can put it in the fridge. But we're going to take this stuff. You can see there's a lot of oil sitting in there. So we're going to put that into a colander and let that drip back in here. So every once in a while, we'll come in here and we'll just kind of stir this stuff around. So it may not drip as long as, as it did last time, but it looks like we still got plenty of left for a nice feed of crackling. I'll bring you back when we're ready for the next step. So both of our pots with uh, the trimmings that have been rendered have been sitting in the fridge. So now we're ready to start working on purifying them. See if we can pop this loose here just by pushing on the edge. All right, pushing on the edge isn't gonna break that loose. Um, it's probably a pretty thick cap here, so we're gonna have to just take a little paring knife and cut around the edge. Okay, so now we can just tip this. Oh, look at that. Look how thick that is. Boy, we definitely got a lot of fat out of that. But you see all this stuff on the bottom, so that's going to have to be scraped off. So I'm just going to move this off camera a bit here. Okay. So these are basically all the little bits that were just floating on top of the water itself. So they were between, they were in the interface between the water and the rendered fat. We're just going to scrape what we can by hand here and then we'll get we'll get a knife and scrape the rest so we're just gonna throw this away this is all just crud okay the surface is really rough kind of undulating here so we're just going to use a small spoon and we're just going to scrape a little more of this off get this cleaned up So you notice as we're scraping this stuff off, how nice and clean and white it is underneath. This is one of the advantages of doing it with this boiling water method, as opposed to trying to do it in the oven, where it just kind of burns it and turns it all brown. Now, flavor-wise, you know, if you're only using it for cooking, I suppose that's okay. But if you're going to use it for other stuff as well, or if you want to use it for, for baking, you you don't want that coloration to it. You know, some people use this for cosmetics, they use it for soap, that kind of thing. Now the, at this point, we're gonna we're gonna cut this up a little bit. Now this isn't gonna fit in this smaller pot here, but we've got some more in here we're gonna pull out. So I'm just gonna have to uh, clean up this other pot. I didn't scrub it real super clean, I just I dumped everything out and rinsed it out really good and wiped it down with some paper towel. I mean, it was just basically fat and water that was in there. So now we're going to cut this up a little bit. I'm going to actually take this opportunity to use my big breaker knife that I just got in. This is mainly for butchering large pieces of meat. So if you want to get like a whole standing rib roast or something and turn it into ribeye steaks, it's a knife like this that you're going to use. I'm trying to do this with a smaller knife. I mean, you could do it, but it just wouldn't be that easy. So I'm going to just cut this into quarters here. Okay, I'm just going to throw this back in the pot. Along with some fresh water. And we're just going to remelt it. And this is going to get more of the debris out of it and purify it more. Now, if you want to really get it like super, super clean, you know, if you're going to make cosmetics or something, 
after it's melted, you might want to run it through some cheesecloth. We're not going to be making cosmetics, so I'm not that uh, that much worried about it. So now we've got our other pot where we took kind of the the leftover bits initially from the big one, and we had more left over than I thought we were going to. So I'm just going to add this to the mix. You see, we didn't get nearly as much, but we got a bit. So we're going to clean the debris out of this as well. Now we do have a few little chunks that got away from us of pure fat in this pot. So we're just going to dip those out by hand. Throw them in with the, the remelt batch here. We got about as good as we're going to get. And we'll just kind of fold this up. Don't need to cut it. And we can throw that in the pot. Okay, I got to clean up a little bit before we go to the next step here. So we got the clean up done there. Now we're just going to add some water. I'm just putting in straight hot water from the tap. Just here, hot water. This comes out of the tap about 125 degrees Fahrenheit. Now in this case, we don't have to have the water come above all the fat, as long as most of it is going to be kind of covered. And as it melts down, of course, it's going to flow back together and float on top. So that's plenty of water. Okay, once again, we're going to put it back on the burner. We're going to set our burner to four. And then once it starts bubbling, I'll probably turn it down to about three and a half. We just want that slow bubble because we want this to melt and then reform into a layer on the top. And this is going to once again get more debris out of it. So you saw all the debris we had this time. So next time, there should only be a tiny little debris that we have to scrape off the bottom. I'll bring you back on the next stage. We're ready for the last step of canning our lard here. So let me show you the equipment you're going to need. Uh, you don't necessarily need all of this, but this will make your life a lot easier if you've got it. When we pull the lard out of the big pot that's sitting in the fridge, uh, of course, we're going to scrape off the bottom again like we did the other times. And then it's going to get chopped up and put in here. And once it's put in here, then we've got this canner pot. And we're going to take this frame and we're going to put it in. Actually, this is for when you're normally canning. You set the jars in here and you can pull them up. But we're going to put it in upside down. We'll put about this much water in here. And then this pot went over top. And basically what we're doing is a big double boiler so we can melt the lard. The lard in here is going to be just pure lard. That's why it needs to be done this way because we're not doing it in actual water. And then using this stuff here, so this is a funnel for the jars and this allows us to grab the jars. I'll bring you right back. Now we're going to grab our uh, pot with our lard out of the fridge. We're going to take it out, scrape it off and put it in the double boiler and get it melting. And then we'll follow up the next steps after that. Let's get started. So I've got a, a thin knife with a flexible blade. And I'm just going to use that to go around the edge of the disc of fat here. So I'm just going to tip it over into the water. It's not going to hurt it any. So I can get a grip on it here. Get something down there to grab onto it. Don't have enough water in there to tip it far enough. There we go. Okay. Now you notice I'm wearing gloves. You're definitely going to want to do that. You don't want to handle this stuff with your bare hands. It's kind of disgusting. So now we're going to put it upside down. And I'm just going to strain out with my fingers some of the leftover bits from cutting it out that are just floating on the water in here. I don't know if you can see that on camera. 
Unfortunately, I don't have a proper kitchen chef video YouTube set up. <laughs> so I can't really get you the best of angles sometimes. Now we're just going to get this out of our way. Okay, now you notice we've got a lot less crud to deal with here. So we're just going to scrape this off as best we can. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, as long as we get 99% of it. I'm just going to grab our knife so we can get a little more scraped off here. Even if we got to lose a little of the good fat, we we really don't want any more debris in there than than absolutely necessary. Now, if you were going to use this for cosmetics or soap making or something, you might want to do the last purification step that we did one more time to get it absolutely 100% pure. For our purposes, it's just really not necessary. So I'm just going to grab my big breaker knife here. And if you're interested in getting a big knife like this, this was actually a pretty reasonable price. I only paid about a little over 100 bucks for this. I'll leave a link down in the description where you can pick one up. This is the uh, Victorian Ox 13 inch breaker knife. Now, I I got this originally, you know, for cutting, cutting up uh, big primal roasts and that kind of thing, you know, get like a whole rib roast and cut it up into ribeye steaks, that kind of a thing. But it comes in handy for all kinds of things. I think that's going to do it. And we're going to take these pieces and put them in a smaller pot that we can put in the in our uh, kind of double boiler setup here. Well, it's going to be a close fit. It's going to be a close fit, but I think we're going to get it all in there. Once it melts, it should, it'll probably pretty much completely fill it, but I don't think it's going to overflow. Okay, as I showed you a moment ago, this is our, our double boiler setup. This is actually a normal canner. And this is the like the canning rack. We're just putting it in upside down so that this gets held off the bottom. And we're gonna put some water in there. So I'm just gonna put in hot water out of the tap. So we didn't need to put a great deal in there. We just put enough so that it's gonna come up, you know, a couple inches up the side of this inner pot. We don't want so much that it's going to float. I actually came up more than I thought it was going to, but that's okay. Now we're just going to slide it onto the big burner here. And we're going to turn this onto a medium heat. And then once it's come to a low boil, then we're going to turn it back down just a little bit, probably to like four out of 10. So just to, Get it warm enough so that it completely melts. Okay, I'll bring you back in a bit for the next step. Okay, so I've got my seven quart sealers here. So I got them laid out, spaced enough so that when they're hot, I can grab them with the pot holder and not have an issue. And we don't want them touching each other. And we're going to put them in for about five or ten minutes. I'll probably start pulling them out one at a time at five minutes. Shouldn't take too long to get them all dipped. And we're going to set the oven at as low of temperature as it will go. Up here, we've got our other stuff that we need to actually pour the stuff into the jars. As you can see, our fat is nicely melted. I'll bring it back in a bit. Okay, luckily, we were able to set our oven at 145 on the warmer setting. That's actually pretty unusual for ovens. I'm really glad that we could do it that way. Well, actually, I needed to give it a few minutes to warm up to temperature and then a few minutes at temperature. So 
It's been about 12, 13 minutes. Now we're gonna get started. So I'm just grabbing a couple pot holders. Actually, I better put on an apron. Okay, so we're just gonna take out one jar at a time. And we'll put it in the funnel. And we'll get it nice and close here. Now, two, there are two reasons that we needed to put these in the oven. One, we needed to sterilize them and 140 degrees. We'll do that. We're at 145, so they're sterilized now and completely dry them out in case there was a little moisture from washing them. Uh, plus, we don't want to pour, you know, the hot uh, lard into a cold jar or, you, or we could crack the jar. So that's why we went to the trouble of doing that. And we basically just fill them up. So basically we want to fill this up basically to the bottom of the funnel, which is leaving about not quite a centimeter of space below the threads. So you want that little bit of space in there so that it, the air has room to contract a little bit. Oh, I might've got a little too much in there. Okay, now we're just gonna put the the lid. Yeah. Yeah, I just had to grab a little vinegar here. We're going to wipe the the tops of the jars just to make sure there's no bacteria or grease on there. So we're just using a little white vinegar. Now, like rubbing alcohol, the vinegar will evaporate fairly quickly. Since I forgot to do that before I stuck this lid on, I'm just going to wipe it down too. Normally, we wouldn't have to do the lids. Okay, so we're just gonna tighten these down and because the oil is hot, that's gonna create the very slight amount of vacuum that we need as it cools down. So we don't have to actually go in and, and do the normal canning routine where you put it in the canner and boil it and all that kind of stuff. That's completely not necessary. And once these are set, put them in a fairly cool, dark place and they'll last on the shelf for at least 25 years. Uh, and I, I personally know of someone who's got some that's been sitting 25 years in their root cellar. I'll bring it back in a bit. So on this last jar, I poured the contents in rather than trying to ladle it all out. And as you can see, we got some water in there. So we're gonna have to use this little doodad right here. And that'll let us pour the water out of there after it settles. And then we can put it back in the jar. So we wound up with, it'll be not quite four jars. Okay, our uh, fat has risen on top of the water. You can see the water level under here. 
So this is the jar just came out of. We can't reuse this for the actual lard because it's got now moisture in it. So I'm just gonna use that to pour off the water. So we just very gently pour this off. This lets us pour all the water out. And we let it go a little bit until we get pure fat. Now we're just gonna let it settle for a little bit longer just to make sure we've got all the water out. Now later, once this sets, we can take the little bit of fat that's gonna harden on top here and we can peel that out for use. I'll just stick that in the fridge and I'll use it for immediate cooking over the next few days. So I don't have to worry about how that's gonna keep. Well, I don't see any water settling out of there, out of this, I mean. So I think we got it all. So I'm just gonna grab another jar out of the oven here. I didn't turn it off. Now we can just pour right out of here. And you can see how clean this is. This process of purifying using the, the water-based rendering works really well and gives you a nice pure product. Okay. So we wound up with by the time all said and done, we wound up with about three and a half quarts. We'll bring you back when it's all hardened so you can take a, a look at the final product. Well, there we are, our finished product. Now you notice that this jar here is actually a little bit lower. I actually had found a, a little bit of water. I had poured the last half of, the, of this container out of the pot instead of ladling it. So I had to do the same step I showed you just a little bit earlier, how to separate the water out. So we wound up losing a little bit there. And of course we lost about half of this one. Now it's not quite solid yet. You know, if I move it around, you can see it. There's just a little bit of motion in there. So I had it in the fridge for a little bit, but this is basically what it's gonna look like on the shelf. So it's nice and pure and white. So there are sometimes a few things you got to worry about when you're using this method for rendering, but it provides the cleanest version of the product that you're ever going to get. Uh, if you do it in the oven, for instance, to melt the lard, then it's going to wind up turning uh, yellowish or brown. And it's really difficult to completely purify it that way. If you want something that's going to be shelf stable for a very long time, this method is what you want to use. So I hope you found this video useful. It's the first time I've done this process this way. Growing up on a farm, we used to always do it in the oven, usually a, in a wood oven. I find I really like this. You know, it's a little more work, but it produces such a wonderful end product. If you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos that we do. Thanks for hanging out with us today. We really appreciate you coming. We'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.